Hi, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today I have a fun project for you, so let's jump right in. I, of course, started this flip with some cleaning, so I'm filling up my mini bucket with some warm water and two capfuls of Fusion's TSP Alternative, and then I'm gonna grab my gloves and a scrubbing sponge and get right to it. All right, so today we are flipping this traditional French provincial style mirror that I got from the thrift store for just $15. My goal for this piece is to make kind of an aged and chippy finish that's white and gold. I just really wanna make it look antique and I'm not really sure how I'm going to do this, but we'll get into that later. So of course I'm starting with cleaning. This piece was really dusty coming out of the store, so once I get done with the TSP, I of course go back with some water to wipe that all off. And when I was done and this was all dried, I actually tried to go in with some froggy tape to tape off the mirror. Um, I ended up backing out on this and peeling it off because I had read that the paint would be easy to clean and get off of the mirror, which it did come off eventually, but it wasn't easy. So don't be like me. Just take the five minutes and put it on. So I will be using milk paint for this project, and if you've seen my dresser video, which I will link below, you'll know that milk paint can be used to make a beautifully flat finish. Also, if you don't add bonding agent to milk paint, it can make a chippy finish instead, which I thought was perfect for the antique finish I'm going for. Milk paint is a really old style of painting. It's very natural, containing just milk, lime, clay, and some natural coloring. It comes in a powder form and you mix it one to one with water. To apply the paint, I use this square brush by Zebra. This brush is really great for getting into all the edges and corners. It's technically a trim brush, so it's also small enough to be fine, but large enough to go quickly through the painting process. My first coat went on pretty easily. And what I was hoping to do was apply this paint and then as it dries, it crackles up in some parts and that would give me the flaky finish that I was looking for. This did not go according to plan. Without the bonding agent, this surface was actually too smooth and basically all of the paint chipped off. So I was back at square one. So I went back and mixed up another batch of paint, this time adding a bit of bonding agent. And my hope was to hit kind of a middle ground where it would stick, but not too much. But you can see from this footage that it was really chunky, which means I did not mix the paint long enough. This led to all kinds of issues down the road. I was getting really frustrated, but Taking a step back, I mean, painting is not as easy as it looks. There are curveballs everywhere, and it's okay, you know, like, this is part of life. You make mistakes, hopefully you learn something, and then you keep going. At least, if I could go back, that's what I would tell myself. This was already looking a lot better, so I took it outside and used a compressor to push off some of these flakes. And if you're gonna do this, make sure you're wearing glasses, because these little flakes could be really sharp. I got some off, but not quite enough, at least not for what I was wanting. So I actually went in with a flathead screwdriver to see what else I could loosen up. This really worked and it was looking good, but there were still some chunks that bothered me. A lot of texture was there and some parts were really sharp. So after that, I grabbed one of my soft sanding sponges to knock those down. At this point, I'm finally zeroing in on what I wanted, but for now the wood showing through was a bit too dark, so I grabbed some chalk paint and did a very light dry brush over these areas, and this looked awesome. Like It was like a white wash or a lime wash that has weathered away over time. You can add as much or as little of this as you want. You could even try a different color and wipe it back with a cloth as well. So it's really easy to customize until you get the exact look you're going for. All right, so things are actually looking really good. And uh, what's not pictured here is the struggle I went through to get some of this paint off the mirror. It did come off uh, pretty well with just soap and water. You could also probably use some glass cleaner as well. And once I got that off, I did have to go back around and touch up a few spots where the soap also wiped some paint off of the wood. 
So you could totally leave your mirror like this. I think it looks great, especially if you did maybe more of an off-white too, it wouldn't be so bright. But at this point, I really want to add some gold touches, so I'm going to do that with a combination of waxes. So I'm starting with a layer of clear wax, and this will help me control any subsequent layers of colored wax a little better. I think wax is a good choice here because this mirror doesn't really need the protection that a tabletop might, but I still want to make sure the work I've done can live a long, happy life. So I apply this with a brush, or you could also use a lint-free cloth, and once you put it on, you want to also wipe it back and almost polish it or rub it in like you're rubbing lotion into your hand. And after that, I move on to what's called gilding wax, which is a highly pigmented, metallic, in this case gold, wax that you apply with either a small brush or the tip of your finger. Now this wax is meant for ornamentation uh, or even hardware, accents, that kind of thing, but I actually ended up going all out with this, which I think is awesome. I love gold, so I applied this stuff everywhere, but you can do as much or as little as you want. And if you make mistakes, you can also go back with the clear wax to lift some of this off. You can also buff some of this in to blend it, but I personally didn't do that. Once I was done with the gold, I thought it was still a bit too bright. You know, it wasn't really dirty enough or aged in the way that I wanted it to be. So what I did was I grabbed some brown wax and started tapping on top, almost like dirt that has accumulated over time. And this tapping motion, it made a really cool gritty texture. It really replicated dirt. If you want an extra artistic challenge, you can play around with shadows and highlights here. So maybe put some extra brown in the corners to make some more shadows, and then use the gold and white to your advantage to make highlights. But if you're not up for that, or I have no idea what I'm talking about, that's totally okay too. Just put it wherever feels right to you. There's not really a right answer. And now we're done! So it's time to take this mirror and get it to its new home. Are you ready? So what do you guys think? This project, again, was a bit of a struggle, but I think eventually it turned out just the way I wanted, which is awesome. I love the brassy gold tones as well as the white. It's almost like caked into those edges and corners. It gives a really cool effect. And don't forget about the chippy paint layers underneath. <laughs> I mean, they look so cool. That's just what I wanted. This project for me is a reminder in patience and persistence. I know sometimes when you have an artistic eye, it can be really hard and disheartening for what you're making to not really be meeting your expectations. But you really just have to keep going and one day your skills will match your vision. Another lesson here that I want to let you in on is to do with the styling of this piece. I am currently living with my husband in a tiny little apartment with very little furniture. And what we do have is mostly left over from college or purchased on Craigslist. <laughs> we are in the process of buying a house and I'm really excited to have some place more permanent to start collecting the furniture I love, painting the walls and all that. I love French country style if you can't tell yet. <laughs> but I mean, in the meantime, this is what I have to work with. I can't paint, I don't have any budget, nor will I <laughs> in the near future. And I know a lot of you are probably in a similar situation, but I just, I don't want that to be a restraint for myself or for you. I mean, this mirror in the end cost me $15 plus paint and I love it. Does it match my other furniture? Does it match the style of the apartment? Like, no, <laughs> no, it doesn't. But one day, hopefully it'll match my future home. Is the setup Pinterest worthy? I don't know, probably not, but I love looking at this mirror and it really makes me happy. So to me, that means I accomplished my mission. Anyways, I'll get off my soapbox for now. Thanks for hanging out with me and I will see you again in the next video.